You're under surveillance. Story. You are under surveillance. <laughs> I know. You've been under surveillance. This is, is that bird really a bird? No, that's that's a surveillance camera. That's a the Department of Homeland Security. And then the NSA cameras are over there. Okay. You're being filmed? Yeah. You got them, don't You're tell me them filmed? chemtrails around. No, we got the NSA across the street and Homeland Security filming us. Okay. We... In Texas, don't know We're going to have a little intermission here. TTC 69. Which Some have serious security. information. Runs through my so get prayed up. And there are people over there who have no idea what's fixed to come in their back door. Uh, All right. An unelected state agent claimed that the agreement with the Florida company was even secret from the Texas legislature. Jim, we're going to we're going to pause. And the truth came out. So Hagen can speak. Across the state, all for heads to roll. I'm going to uh, centrist response. Sir Jerry, I'm going to put you on the camera. Make its first yeah. U.S. newspaper. I'm going to put you on the camera. Every newspaper they bought was a No, just make sure it's Hagen. If Hagen moves around, what's that? The 40 or 50 newspapers is nothing compared to the profits that will be made. Just Facebook that? alone, the state polar web is estimated to raise more than $200 billion oh, this one in just the first 15 years. And Texas is only a small. Okay, is it straight? We're going to be well, pausing. Well, it's caught, but I guess it'll get it. On the, uh, the Citizens Grand Jury from what he did a couple weeks ago. Uh, oh, the citizens' grand jury. Actually, it's not citizens. Yeah, don't say the people's grand jury, okay. right? Don't be a subject. Okay, don't be a subject, right? Okay, that's another talk. That's another. That's another talk. Okay. We have a special guest. You're sick. We have voice recognition in here. <laughs> you want to be the cameraman? You want to be the camera? So, so you're not on the camera? Okay. I'm going to ask Rich if he would lead us in prayer before I speak. Yeah. Oh, Rich. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray, Lord, that uh, you'd open all of our ears, that we may hear what Hagen has to say. We pray that you'd anoint everything together for us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now, I think most of you know me, and I think most I know most of you. So you probably heard some of the things that I'm going to be talking about before uh, uh, that I have talked about before. So I ask you to bear with me, and that I may be redundant. I've been traveling around, doing about three, roughly three times a week. I've been speaking to people in different counties across Pennsylvania, and in Florida we're doing the same thing. A place in Florida, and we are doing um, the same thing I'm about to speak about here. Yes. Florida has 67 counties like Pennsylvania, and it's an arduous process to get to all of these, but thank God I have other people that are helping me do it. Here in Pennsylvania, the three people who were also with me as a delegate to the Second Continental Congress in St. Charles, Illinois, are working with me as well to do this. They're, they're taking care of the east side of the state. But what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Fifth Amendment right of the people's grand jury. It says very clearly in there, uh, under the Fifth Amendment, no person shall be held to answer for a capital or otherwise infamous crime except according to a presentment of the grand jury. That's the people's grand jury. The Fifth Amendment, uh, the, the Bill of Rights is about the people. It's not about government or the court or anything else. It's your protections. Those are protections for you to keep government from infringing on those things. Well, the Supreme Court, in, in the case of U.S. versus Williams, handed down a 6-3 decision, and Scalia delivered the opinion of the court. And he said that the common law grand jury is the people's fourth branch of government. It's there to prevent oppression and tyranny in the government. <clears throat> that being said, the Bar Association claims in 1946 that they abolished common law. Well, in order to abolish common law, you have to abolish God. 
God is the first rule of the common law. His word is the number one rule. Amen. So those of us who think that the Bar Association has this omnipotence might ought to get on our knees and ask for enlightenment. The Bar Association has taken control of this country. They're in control of all three branches of government. They're in control of all the local governments. Every public officer has a solicitor. And whenever you have a complaint or you address one of them, they will tell you, I need to speak to my solicitor, or they'll have their solicitor there. Well, that puts you at a disadvantage, and they're using your money to pay that solicitor so that you are disadvantaged. They are supposed to be your representative, but what are they doing? They're doing anything they want, and they're using the legal ease of a solicitor and what they are controlling to d despair and discourage you from pursue pursuing your rights, your God-given rights. Your rights come from God. They don't come from government. Now, what we're doing is we're forming the common law grand juries in every county. I'm going to ask you tonight, I challenge you tonight, to put your name on this list for the, and get and the information for the county that you live in. And we, I have appointed leaders in different counties in the interim to gather this information together and to call for meetings, and I will come to those meetings and show you how to use, how to form and use the grand jury. You will at that meeting, we need 25 people in each county, a minimum of 25. I'm recommending 30, but I'm also recommending that we get as many as we can possibly do, because we're going to need more than one county, one uh, common law grand jury in each county. But we can begin with one. And the first public official that we put behind the, the Great Bar Hotel will send the message to all the rest of them to stop uh, interfering and depriving us of our rights. It will stop them from taxing you on your property. There's no law that authorizes the property taxes. It will stop them from putting you in a criminal court for a traffic citation. And if you can't pay it, they put you in jail, hold you in contempt, and put you in jail. These are all things created by the Bar Association. It is not law. It never was law. The statutes that the legislature creates are done unconstitutionally in violation of their oath of office. They swear that they will uphold, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States and of this state, this commonwealth. But they don't. They promise that they will do it with fidelity. They do not. <coughs> so what we will be doing as a common law grand jurors, we will be bringing presentments against those people. The common law grand jury has tremendous judicial power. We can subpoena persons, papers, and records to appear before us. And we will do investigations on our own. And they have to fund it. The counties has to fund it. It works with the sheriff. Once we hand down a presentment, the sheriff has to take the presentment and make an arrest whoever the presentment is against. He has to hand it to the district attorney for criminal prosecution. It's mandatory. He can't, he can't not do it because if he does, then we'll do a presentment against him and we'll remove him from office. We have that power. We'll take the sheriff out of office and put someone into that office that will do it until an election can be held. The people have tremendous power that they don't know about. If you take a Pennsylvania Constitution, Gary probably has one here somewhere. <laughs> Article 1, Section 2. I hope he's got a lot of them. It says, all power is inherent in the people, and all free governments are founded on their authority. For the advancement of these ends, they have at all times an inalienable and indefeasible right to reform, alter, abolish their government, and to lay new go uh, establish new government, laying the foundation on principles most likely to achieve these ends. If you don't believe what I'm saying, read it in there. It's word for word. I'm telling you exactly what it says in that Constitution. The oath says at Article 6, Section 3, I do solemnly swear that I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution of the United States and of this Commonwealth, and I will expedite the duties of my office with fidelity. I've been doing work for a long time, helping people, teaching the Constitution, doing a lot of things. There is nothing more powerful than what I'm doing right now. I'm putting the power in your hands. It's up to you. If you believe in freedom and you want to save this nation, and you want to save freedom for yourself and your posterity, which it tells you in the preamble, 
It says we the people have this duty. It's not the government. It's not somebody else. It's you. You must set your hand to this thing and you must take that initiative and dedicate the time necessary and it is a sacrifice. I warn you it is. But I will never surrender my freedom or yours. I will fight for that freedom of all as long as God gives me breath. It is a sin, in my opinion, and I believe I'm correct, not to do so because the Constitution is based on biblical principle. It is enshrined in the 5,000 year leap. If you've read that book, you know what I'm talking about. The 28 principles are there. It acknowledges God. Our Constitution acknowledges God through the Declaration of Independence. It doesn't acknowledge Allah. It doesn't acknowledge someone else. It acknowledges God, our Creator. And we owe that duty not only to ourselves, but to each other, our friends and our children and our entire families. Because if we let freedom slip away in this country, and it is, the Communist Manifesto is already fulfilled, then we have done a disservice to everyone in this nation. We don't even deserve this nation. God blessed us with freedom. Let's stand up and take it back. I'm going to ask you, I'm asking you, I'm begging you, put your name on this list and, and dedicate the time and tell others what you're hearing me say. Tell your family and your friends about it. Let's start talking it again. Let's do like the founding fathers did back in the colonial days when they declared the independence from Great Britain. They talked among themselves, among the families, and they had to form secret societies to do what they did. We, they gave us a peaceful means that we don't have to use violence. This is our peaceful means without violence. And it scares the, the public officers to death. They don't want to go to jail. They just want our money. They want us to be their slave. And today we are their slave. So I hope that you will hear the wisdom in what I'm saying, that you will, you will take the initiative and do that. And, do, and above all, quit signing things with the government. Don't sign nothing with them. When they shove a document in front of you for a license or anything else, don't do it. Tell them no. You don't have to. It's government by consent. They need your consent. When you sign your name to it, you are consenting to what they're asking you to do. Freedom doesn't require you to have a license. Some of you have read the story, I'm sure, about Patrick Henry when he went to the, the uh, 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 Constitutional Convention. He rode his horse through a town in Virginia. They had a man tied to a whipping post and they were whipping him. They called it scourging. He asked why they had beat him so badly. His ribs were protruding out of the skin. He asked why they were whipping this man so badly. They said because he refuses to take a license to preach the gospel. And they beat him to death. They beat Jesus Christ to death too. Is that what we want? Is that what we're willing to accept? It's not you today, but it might be you tomorrow or the day after. Or it might be your children or somebody else. But it's coming. You're seeing it on these videos and so forth. They're telling you the problem. They're not giving you the solution. I'm giving you the solution. I'm telling you, you stand up and you do what you should be doing. And you don't have to use violence. You can use peaceful means and accomplish the end that you desire. Now, it won't be a situation where I don't like this guy, so I'm going to file a complaint against him. You have to have a legitimate complaint. And that's your duty as a grand juror to do that. So I'm asking you, I spoke yesterday in McKeon in Erie County. The people were overwhelming, overwhelmingly impressed because they hadn't heard what I was saying before. Most of them didn't know anything about the Constitution. I know the Constitution for the most part by heart. I know what the Founding Fathers did because I put 24 years into studying it. But I did this, this is my sacrifice for freedom. I could sit back and relax because I'm retired from going out and being a government slave. I could sit back and relax and just draw the government benefits, but I don't believe in them. I'm not sitting back and relaxing. I'm doing what is necessary to preserve freedom for all of us. 
you take this stand, I will stand with you. Anytime, anywhere. I am not afraid of any government official, including the President of the United States. I have no fear of any anything or anybody. I only fear God. If I don't do my duty, I have a reason to fear Him. Because I'll pay for it in the end. And I hope you will put your name to this. There's a list here for Westmoreland County. Someone told me they're from Westmoreland. Uh, whatever county you're from, if I don't have a list for your county, I'll make one. Put your name on the paper and I will see to it that somebody is willing to gather and maybe it'll be you. Maybe you're willing to do that. To gather the names in your respective county to get this 25 member minimum number to get the grand jury started. Now, uh, two days ago, I spoke to the county sheriff in Butler County where, where my place is. And he seemed very receptive because he knows I will do what I've set out to do. He also knows that I will bring a presentment against him if he doesn't do his job. These people, once they know that you will stand and not back down, they back down. <coughs> but he is your protector. The sheriff is your protector. He's not the statutory... Uh, thing that a lot of people believe. The governor removed the sheriff in, in Florida from office, which he had absolutely no authority to do. The sheriff don't know any better. There's some people going to this guy now to uh, tell him to get in touch with me because I'm going to help the guy. The governor had no business removing him from office. He did what his duty was. They had arrested somebody for having a concealed weapon without a permit. Now, there's nothing requires you to get that license from the government to keep and bear arms. Not in the U.S. Constitution or the state constitution. <coughs> but the governor thought that he could just go ahead and do it, and he's in trouble now. And he's probably going to wind up being removed from office himself. But this is the power that you hold in your hands. And you can bring these people to the court, before the court, in each county. You can control your county because all government is local. Control your local government and you control the rest of it. With that, I will ask you once again, set your hand to this document. Let's put it together and gather together and elect a foreman of the, of the common law grand jury. And I will teach you. There is a website. I, I, I hope you'll write this website down and go begin to study. It's www.NewYorkCommitteeMen, M-E-N, CommitteeMen.org. Go on there, read, watch the videos, learn what it's about and the power that you hold in your hands. We're going to be putting up a website in Pennsylvania and Florida, as well as other states, within the coming week, this week. We will be fashioning things that they have on there that I know to be true that will simply change in name of the state only. Everything else is correct. So we have to fashion it for Pennsylvania, fashion it for Florida, for Ohio, etc. And we'll be doing that. So I, I urge you to go on that website and, and do that. Uh, I also urge you to do something else. Your right of suffrage under Article 1, Section 5 of the Pennsylvania Constitution, your right to vote. I encourage you to go on there and realize that it's a right. Your right of suffrage is a right, not a privilege. You do not have to be registered to vote. You can vote without being registered. I'm living proof. I rescinded the voter registration because of the first question on it. It says, are you a citizen of the United States of America? If you answer no to this question, do not fill out this form. I am not a citizen of the United States of America. I am one of the people of Pennsylvania at this point. I'm one of the people, not a citizen. A citizen is a subject. And this is not a citizen's grand jury, it's a people's grand jury. And they cannot deny you your you right to suffer. Here, Matt. Thank you, Matt. You, you, cannot, you cannot be denied your right of suffrage. You have the right to run for office and to vote. You can't be required to sign a document saying you're something that you're not because you just perjured yourself. And the box right before you sign your name says, 
This document may be used as an affidavit for any purpose. Who would be dumb enough to sign that? We're deceived into doing it, and we did it, and I'm one of them. But I rescinded it. And I, sent, I, I hand carried a document, an authentic document, that was notarized, made it an affidavit, rescinding my signature and demanding my right of suffrage as opposed to my privilege to vote. They brought their solicitor out, as I said before. The solicitor said, yeah, there's no problem with this. He can do that, and you have to let him vote. Now, you can't vote in the primaries because that's political. That's a party. But you can vote in November. And you can also get your name on the ballot to run for office yourself. But when you belong to a party, you see, they, they start weeding things out because they have control over it. But you, as one of the people, demanding your rights, they have no control over it. Get rid of the statutes. Quit paying attention to these statutes because they're not law. They are government by contract, and when you sign your name, it's a contract that's called an adhesion contract. It means someone wrote it one-sided. They didn't write it in your interest and wrote it in theirs. You had nothing to do with it, so why sign it? If you disagree with anything in it, you can strike line whatever you disagree with out, but it's still a contract, no less. Why contract with these people? You do not have to. With that, I'm going to end. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. But again, I implore you, put your name on this list. And let's make this happen. Because we will save America. We will save our churches. We'll save our freedoms, our right to bear arms, as well as all of the others. You look at the Ninth Amendment, what the Ninth Amendment says. The enumeration of certain rights, that means fixed, shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. Then it, the Supremacy Clause in Article 6, Clause 2 says, This Constitution and the laws which shall be made in the pursuance thereof, meaning they all have to be consistent therewith. And all treaties made or which shall be made under the authority of the United States. Each state got together and formed this Constitution by the authority of the people. By the authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land and judges in every state shall be bound thereby anything in the Constitution to the contrary notwithstanding. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your document. It's your law to the that Constitution is as fundamental as God's law. It has God's law in it. It's based on the law of God. And it is your document to the government. It's your law to them. It's not their law to you. That don't apply to you. It applies to them. So whenever you think your rights come from the Constitution, get on your knees and ask God. And thank Him for giving you your rights because the Constitution didn't give them to you. The Constitution said they come from God, they're fundamental, and they have to be protected. You cannot touch them. Had it not been for George Mason, we would not have had that Bill of Rights. But he told George Washington, I would rather sever my right arm than to set my hand to that document without a Bill of Rights protecting the people. I hope you are inspired enough to set your hand to this document. And then we will put it together. And I'll be there with you. Thank you. Does anybody have a question? Hey, when you were talking about um, the political parties, when you saw uh, become a member of a political party, they have control of you, but and they can eat things out. What kind of things do you mean by that? Well, they put people, as we know, in positions. They plant them. We call them plants to control and manipulate these things. Uh, the political parties are controlled. This guy said a while ago, I, I don't know if you noticed on this video, he said that the, it's, one, it's a one-party one, it's a one system with two factions. George Washington warned us about that. He said the political parties, too, will rise up and control when they're really all the same. There will be no difference. They will control everything until freedom is totally lost. That's what the two parties are doing. You're being deceived, you're being misled with false and misleading information. So that's what I mean by that. I guess an example could be the fact that it's almost like you don't even need primaries anymore because the party, uh, the state committees will endorse candidates 
their candidate that they want to see before the primary. And, you ever and they only fund those candidates. They, have, won't, they won't allow funding for any other candidate right. that they're not endorsing. Have you ever asked yourself where they decide, how they decide and how they come by endorsing a political candidate? Uh, yeah, but I don't know. Right. I don't know who, who does? Don't who does? Know. No, I don't know anybody that does. No. But all of a sudden it seems, no. it's, yeah, it seems that a particular no. candidate is being endorsed by the parties and the money goes to them. But here's something else. When you go to vote, don't vote on the machine. Paper ballot. You don't have to. Paper ballot. Demand a provisional ballot. That's it. You tell them point blank. I'm not voting on that machine. I want a provisional ballot. I want a paper trail for my vote. I want to know that my vote counted for who I cast it for. You don't have to use the machine. You definitely can use a provisional ballot. I do it. Okay, now, for instance, I want to do what you did with the affidavit. I will provide, there will be an affidavit on the website. You can go on there and you can look at all the different things. We're having drop down menus and you can look at what's on there. And, and the affidavit will be on there, among others. For voting. Yeah, yeah for, for rescinding your voter registration and demanding your right to vote. Okay. The, the document that I did myself will be on there. Okay. But you can, I, I recommend that you notarize that document, have someone notarize it. There's some people that are notarized for free this kind of stuff, okay? I don't know if any of you guys know Mabel Mazza. Mabel has worked with us for a long time. She did mine, okay? They're attacking her now, trying to take away her notary from her, and I'm defending her for it. So I think probably the lady from the Department of State, Jackie, um, do you remember her last name, honey? Jackie something or other? I think she's going to wind up in, in serious trouble after the letter that I just crafted for Mabel today. <laughs> so. Now, is there a way for me to deregister? Yes, that affidavit does it. Oh, the affidavit does yes. that. Okay. Yes. And, and then they have to put you on the list so that in November you can vote. But then again, you know, every time that I voted for president, I voted for Ron Paul. When Ron Paul wasn't running, I voted for myself. So, you know, you don't, I mean, people say, well, I've had people tell me, well, you're just wasting your vote. You vote for, even if you vote for Ron Paul, you're wasting your vote. No, really? It's not. I'm voting my conscience. I can go to sleep at night knowing, knowing that I voted for an honorable man, mm -hmm. a statesman, not a politician. I know Ron Paul. I met his, I met Rand Paul's uh, wife and daughter and uh, actually put my arms around them. They didn't know who I was. I come up behind them and hugged them both and walked with them for a few minutes and talked to them. Pastor John Pastoris was with me and uh, we had fun. They, they actually invited us to go have dinner with them. But uh, I, we were... I, I felt it inappropriate and declined, but told him I'd take a rain check on that because I'd love to go and sit down with them and Rand Paul because I think Rand Paul is going to be a presidential candidate in 16, and, and I look forward to it. I'm not sure. Okay. Hagan, you brought up Rand Paul, and it's noted that he voted for the National Defense Authorization Act. Lost a lot of uh, support <coughs> by doing that. Is there a tank okay, let me, let me ask, okay, okay. I, I will, I will defend him in this manner. He may have done that. I don't know. But let me ask you: How many things did Obama vote for that you disagree with? How many things uh, did George Bush vote for that you disagree with? You know, are we vote? I mean, are we really voting for the lesser of two evils? or maybe many evils? Who do you know that you would be willing to cast your vote for? Uh, in, in this case, I, I would still vote for Ron Paul. I'm sure Ron Paul had done things that I could find that I, that I would disagree with. But if I've, got, if I've got no other choices, who do I vote for? Do I want this nation returned? Do I want the president? Do I want the, do I want the War Powers Act rescinded? so that we go back to a peacetime constitutional government? Or do I want to continue with a, a, a corporate government from the top down? Because you know that all the governments are corporations. Rand Paul, I believe, will follow his father's footsteps. He may have done that. I don't know if he did or not. But I'd like to ask him personally, face to face, why he did it, if he did, in fact. So to, to criticize the man without knowing the facts, 
I would be careful about doing that because you might be shooting your, your own self in the foot. I don't know. But I'll tell you this. I'll tell you something I did do. I, I, I neglected to mention this. Let me, I'll get to you in a second. Let me mention this. I called NCCS, National Center for Constitutional Studies, this past week. I hadn't talked to them in probably five or six months. Um, the reason I talked to them is because I'm out of books. And I'm doing a class on November 29th, or not November, June 29th, in Venango County in, in the little town of Stoneboro. I don't have the address yet, but if you want to go to that class, you want to attend that class, I encourage you to do it. I think it's going to be about a $10 fee or something like that to the guy who's hosting the, the event. Um, but when I talked to NCCS about this, and I, I mentioned that because it's connected with NCCS, I ordered the books for that class. So I would have the Making of America, the 5,000 Year Leap in Constitutions, and so forth for that class. But um, I asked them about the Constitution that they put out, and I think Gary has some of them here, and, well, there's one laying right there. And uh, I said to him, I said, it come to my attention several years ago, and I still wonder, is the 13th Amendment really eliminated out of this? They got the, co the exact copy from Washington, D.C. is what this is in the archives. But as we know, in 1812, the British burnt the archives for this country. They attacked this nation for well, that purpose to do that. And you ask yourself why? Well, NCCS had received a certified copy of the, the laws of Virginia that had the original Constitution in it. The 1787 Constitution, not this one. And the 13th Amendment did not allow any lawyer, for example, anyone who held a, a title of nobility, meaning Esquire, or any other person who received a, a present gift, a monument of any sort from any uh, potentate or foreign nation to hold an office of government of public trust. That certified document has that 13th Amendment in it. This doesn't. It's not in here. For the most part, it's the same as this one except for that. And that was 1819 when that document was recorded in the Sam Houston Library in Texas. I am going to Texas when I go back to Florida to look at that document with my own eyes. And I will bring back another certified copy that I have seen. I have seen the document. I'm going to have them certified the same as this gentleman did. But NCCS sent me that being certified and having their official stamp on it from the library gives me confidence that it's worth my trip over there. So that, that prohibits attorneys from holding public Yes, office, yes. Office. Now, Sorry. the Bar Association told me, the chairman of the, of the, United, of the National Bar Association, told me when I, I called him a few years back. He said, Mr. Smith, the Bar Association signed a treaty with the United Nations, which was not the United Nations at that time. It's called something else. League of Nations? Or League, I think it was League of Nations. That they would do everything in their power to change America fundamentally, the United States. That they would abolish common law. Okay, now where did the Bar Association get authority to make a treaty with anybody pertaining to the laws of this nation? He said, we ab abolished common law. And I said, you mean you got rid of God? We're worshiping Him for nothing? Well, I didn't say that. I said, yes, you did. Because you obviously don't know what common law is. I have met one attorney who happened to help uh, Melina and... What was that other girl's name? And Blas? Peggy. Peggy. The old gentleman helped them. He's a retired attorney. He knew what common law was. He's the only attorney I've, had, I've met yet who could accurately describe common law to me. And I was floored. I was totally surprised that he could do that. But he represented them for nothing. Pro bono. So. And who's the person that told you that, uh, about the UN and the Bar Association? That was the president of the National Bar Association. Yeah. You had a question? 
Yeah, uh, could you give some examples of what um, offenses would be appropriate uh, to start with a grand jury? So when I talk to people about, if I try to recruit people, I can give examples of what we would be working, what would be working. I actually already have. Uh, <clears throat> I, I didn't point it out, you may not recognize me. Benj or, uh, uh, William Penn gave Pennsylvania to the people. A commonwealth means owned by the people. A state is a corporation. Okay. William Penn wrote a ses session of laws for the people to live by when he gave the land to the people. It was given to him by the King of England because the king owed his father a tremendous debt. So he gave Pennsylvania, which was much larger than it is now at the time, part of New Jersey and others, he gave that land to him. He gave it to the people. But he, in public law number 59, which is still on the books and, and in the archives, he said, any man who puts a tax on the land of the people will be considered public en enemy number one. So the property taxes makes them a public enemy. It's a crime. I don't know of a better example than that one because who likes the property taxes? The public schools are controlled by the government. They're teaching our kids absolutely false things. Some of you know about it. Okay? And if you try to confront them, they just snub you. We're teaching this and we don't care if you like it or not. They'll make fun of you too. Well, they try to. Propaganda is the best tool they have. And people are so mind conditioned, they accept it. Anybody else? All right, well, thank you very much, and I hope you will put your name in this document, and let's get it done. Already on. Hmm? Already on. All right. From the first time. Yeah. And Gary, Gary is the coordinator for the Common Law Grand Jury for Allegheny County, and Jim Barr is working with him. So I'm looking forward to getting this done, because this will go farther than anything we can do to restore this nation. I have a question, Andy. Uh, when William Penn gave the land to the people of Pennsylvania, 1683, with the stipulation that they follow his laws that he gave with the property, they, can they be inconsistent with the with the U.S. Constitution? Though it was long before the U.S. Constitution, 1683. Remember. Okay. The U.S. Constitution was 1787. But then look what Pennsylvania did, for example. They changed the 1776 Constitution for Pennsylvania in 1789 without, uh, without lawful authority to do so, and they admit it. They totally changed it, wrote a new one, wrote out the protections of the people and began to write again protections for themselves. You see, all the way back to the very beginning, we've had problems with allowing people to be dumbed down and, and allowing the, the public officials to do things without consequence. I mean, look today, they, they set their pay scales, they set their retirements, they do all these things. Who knows how, how much other grafting gratuities they get? And we do nothing. We stand by and say, oh, well, you can't fight City Hall. Well, I'm here to tell you, you can fight City Hall. And I do, and I win. They back off. You hold more power in your hands than you know. Basically, we are the masters. We are. Not basically, we are their okay. masters. You're right. You're right. Not basically. We're we need to start up. acting like masters, not like servants. That's our problem. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't think no, it was no, no. playing. He wanted to get his teeth. He's worked out of rain. He's got a flat screen TV in the back. That's a good oh, 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 He set it up. I forgot yeah, how to great. do this. Yeah, we need that, too. We need that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Garrett. He needs you here.